Hello everyone and welcome to this new series of real time anatomy video sections in which we'll be talking about some real time pictures and we'll try to identify the structures and I'll help you to remember some tricks and some tips to differentiate the sections at different level and how to eliminate the uh, the unwanted options or the things which will not be present at that level and concluding and reaching to the right answer. Well, this is the uh, transverse section of the arm that you're looking at. Now, if I may start here, that is, if it is a transverse section of the arm, and let me tell you in the beginning that in this section, this is the anterior, posterior, lateral, and medial. Now, let me prove it to you that it is anterior, posterior, lateral, medial, because the first thing is to identify the section, to get oriented to the section, and then only the identification can begin. If you look at the humerus and if you look at the posterior surface of the humerus which is more flattened and anterior part is more tapering that tells you this is the anterior end that is the posterior end. This is one tell here. So when you look at the shaft of the humerus the posterior part is flattened anterior end is more tapering or it is more giving a more a triangular appearance. It is a section from the lower part of the arm. Moreover you can see a muscle adherent or it is originating from the anterior surface here and one muscle from the posterior surface. When you look at a transverse section, be it arm or forearm or even thigh, always look at the bone first. The bone is a big tell guys. The bone will tell you about that where the section is taken from, whether it is from the upper half and lower half. And once you'll decide the section is from upper half and lower half, then you can anticipate that what muscle will be seen and which will not be seen here. Like if this is a section from the lower half, if I take a section somewhere from the lower half here, so I do not expect to see the muscle deltoid here or coracobrachialis. Deltoid get inserted onto the deltoid tibrosity that is somewhere in the middle of the arm on the lateral side and coracobrachialis is inserted onto the medial side of the shaft of the humerus. So taking a section from the lower half, as I said, the first thing to remember that what you will not see, deltoid and coracobrachialis will not be there. And which muscle will be there which is not in the upper half? That will be the brachialis muscle. The brachialis muscle, it originates from the anterior surface or you can say anterior lateral and anterior medial surface of the shaft of the humerus and that too from the lower half of the shaft of the humerus. So this muscle that you're looking at which is adherent or which is originating from the humerus here, that is the brachialis muscle here. This muscle is brachialis. Also look at this muscle here, the muscle which is present superficially, this muscle of course is the biceps brachii. The muscle is biceps brachii. Now because biceps brachii have no attachment on the humerus, biceps brachii muscle originates from the supraglenoid tubercle and also from the coracoid process. So it is basically originating from the scapula and it is inserted to the radial tuberosity. So there is no attachment of the humerus, uh, of, of this muscle on the humerus and that's why you will see this muscle passing superficially. This again is an important thing to understand in the transverse section that if a muscle is having a higher origin and a lower insertion, let's say from the bone higher and it goes to the bone which is like below the arm, then you will see these muscles present more superficially. Like the same goes in the thigh section, if you look at sartorius muscle. It is a more superficial muscle because it has no attachment on the femur. It starts from the hip bone and it goes all the way to the tibia. So same story. If you look at the muscle present superficially here, the more superficial muscle tells you the origin is higher or maybe the insertion is lower. So this muscle is biceps brachii. That is brachialis muscle which is deep to it. Now as I said, coracobrachialis is not seen in this section. If coracobrachialis were to be seen, it is the section from the upper half. And then coracobrachialis will be seen inserted onto the medial side. If I look posteriorly in this section, the muscle here obviously that the big muscle there is triceps. But we need to identify that which head of triceps you are looking at. Well, you know that long head of triceps is coming from the infraglenoid tubercle. So that is the only head which is coming from the scapula. And the rest of the two heads are coming from the humerus. Spiral groove, if I take spiral groove or this radial groove as a landmark, the muscle which is, or the head which is originating above the spiral groove is a lateral head, which is a smaller head comparatively. 
and the head which originates from below the spiral groove and occupying majority of the posterior surface of the shaft of the humerus that is a medial head that is the largest head and that's what you're looking at look at this head here this whole thing you can see it is originating from the humerus look at the attachment to the humerus itself this is the medial head of triceps this is the medial head of triceps muscle and this here is the long head of triceps there is a long head again the most superficial the one which is coming from the infraglenoid tubercle so it is a long head so look at the most superficial muscle anteriorly and most superficial muscle posteriorly which again tells you that the origin or maybe the insertion is highest or the lowest secondly when you take a transverse section of the arm the another important tell here is the look at the neurovascular bundle the majority of the nerves and vessels the brachial artery the median nerve ulnar nerve most of them are present on which side now again it's very logical guys all these structures are coming from the axilla and when they come from the axilla now barring radial nerve which will go toward the lateral side most of the ma major structures will come from the medial side and then they come in cl close to the cubital fossa so be it brachial artery will come like this the median nerve will also go like this and ulnar nerve will also run on to the medial side so most of the neurovascular structures in the transverse section of arm will be seen toward the medial side as you can see this bundle here you can see these loads of nerves and vessels to be seen which again gives you a hint that this is the medial side of this image and this is the lateral side of the image so if i just enlarge this picture for you look at that now this here in between is the brachial artery that is a brachial artery which is surrounded by some veins that is a brachial artery surrounded by these veins and i don't know whether you can appreciate that or not in this section this here is a nerve which is closely related to brachial artery and that is the median nerve this nerve is a median nerve as we know brachial artery and median nerve are in close relation to each other and they both becomes the content of the cubital fossa once they reach there and if this here is the region for the intermuscular septum so the nerve that is in front is the median nerve but the nerve which is behind here the nerve which pierces the intermuscular septum and runs behind to go behind the medial epicondyle is the ulnar nerve so this nerve here is the ulnar nerve you're looking at which is behind this medial intermuscular septum that is behind the medial intermuscular septum additionally you know that radial nerve is the one which goes from the axilla it takes this spiral groove or radial groove and then it comes toward the lateral side piercing the lateral intermuscular septum and comes in front of lateral epicondyle so as i said it pierces the intermuscular septum to come in front look at this this is lateral intermuscular septum here this is lateral intermuscular septum and if you see the nerve in front here this nerve is the radial nerve in this section this nerve is the radial nerve and the artery or the blood vessel which will be running along with it will be the profunda brachii vessels i'm sure you all know that it's not only radial nerve it's the profunda brachii vessels also which runs in the spiral groove and then they pierce the intermuscular septum to come in front so this is about the a simple section which is there is not too many things to be identify here unlike uh, the upcoming section in which we'll I'll be talking about the muscles of the forearm and thigh and the leg but as i said the first thing is to train your brain to understand that what are the things to be noticed so if i just give a quick recap on the point to remember here number 1 look at the bone the shape of the bone the transverse section of the bone will be a good important uh, uh, what do you say a trick to identify the section number 2 always go for the superficial muscle look at the most superficial muscle anteriorly or posteriorly and if it is a medial compartment of thigh look medial side because we know what are the superficial muscles and like bicep is most superficial tricep is most superficial sartorius gracilis so just knowing that what are the superficial muscle and looking at the section that will not be uh, difficult to identify them and number 3 look for neurovascular bundle neurovascular bundle knowledge of the neurovascular bundle location will always help you giving an orientation of the section whether it's medial lateral anterior or posterior so this is the first section we talked about in which we saw the structures in the lower part of the arm thank you